All right, let's move on to Cloud Hands now, okay? Cloud Hands, we said, is a sideways motion as if we were walking like a crab. But each time we take a step, the toes lead the movement. The heel, it's impossible for me to lead the movement. But how am I getting my, directing my toes to move in a sideways motion, keeping parallel feet? I'm using shifting of weight. Right now, I'm at 50-50. But I need to, we already learned that only the weightless, insubstantial foot can move safely. Therefore, when I want to move my left foot, I have to keep all my body weight on my right. What did I do? I rounded down, I flexed my knee to allow the opposite foot to be on its toe. At 100%, I should be stable. Then I can open, put my toe down, and slowly come down to a 50-50. Right now, I'm 50-50. So this foot now becomes the weighted foot. Therefore, I slowly gain the weight, lose the weight of the opposite on the toe, make sure I'm firm, then close my foot. Then shift my weight here, bring it up here, so on and so forth, okay? So we're gonna crab walk and do it as a drill so we understand how our feet operate before we start our hands, okay? So going to the left first, okay? But again, every time we do Tai Chi, Tai Chi posture has to be enacted and kept that way because if you get out of Tai Chi posture and you do a movement, no matter how great you think you're doing it because that's what teacher said, if the posture is incorrect, it's probably um, not good for your, your body to move in that way, okay? It's, it, it could be corrected and done in a healthier way, all right? So we said that we would learn how to be clouds by just using our feet. So drag doll, drop that shoulder, making sure that our feet are well grounded. This time we're gonna shift our weight from our left to our right. Why? Because we're gonna crab walk out to the left. Do not just plop that foot down, come down slowly. Come up slowly, alternating. Ground down, make sure that it's at least flexed a little bit. Close, slowly, reverse, open. So in this process, you're saying, wow, it's so easy. Why is she going so slowly? But you sort of miss the point. Because in doing this, you're listening to your body. You're tuned in to every detail, getting those sensations that you need to feel that you're doing it correctly. When we put our upper body together, we want to continue to feel these sensations. It's when we don't, we feel that we're gonna be wobbly and insecure. All right, so we're gonna take this pause here. How do we get to the other side? We do the opposite, but how do we do the opposite? If we want to get out to the right, our right foot then has to lead that motion. Therefore, it has to be a weightless foot. So right now we're 50-50. We want to move to the right. We throw the weight from our right to the left. We open, because this is stabilizing ourselves. We gradually do the up and down routine. And yes, you're saying, you know what? If I go faster, I can still do it. But Tai Chi says, do everything a little bit slower. That's how we have relaxation. That's how we enjoy the moment. That's how we are mindful of what we do, okay? So you saw that I did not take huge steps. You saw that I didn't just plop my foot there, push it back up, plop it down, 
because if you're billowy clouds, this would not be a, the characteristic. So you're soft and light, okay? It does build strength, it does build endurance, okay? It builds muscles. Now the upper, hand, upper body takes its turn. The driver of your movements are your hips and waist. Every time I move with my feet, my hips and waist turn. If they did not turn, I would not be in the optimal position. I have energy that I still am not using correctly. Therefore, besides the parallel feet and the shifting of the weight, we need to address different points. We use the clock. So when we're out at 9 o'clock for you, I will be in that direction. When I am midway, I'm in the 12. When I'm in the 3, my rotation of my spine starts to slightly uh, rotate or uh, revolve, and my hips and waist are directing me. Okay? So this will be in line with what our, our uh, hands or upper body will be doing or enhancing. So this is a slight thing going back and forth in conjunction with shifting of weight, okay? So we said the best way to do cloud hands is to put it all together at the face of a clock. So the upper hand they, first of all, the hands alternate. One hand is higher, one hand is lower. The upper hand is about eye level. It's about eye level, nothing below, nothing above, but eye level. So that you can see your tips of your finger, but out into infinity. So you don't want to steady your fingers, steady your fingers. That's not Tai Chi, but you want to look out beyond your beyond your fingers, okay? So, the, so you know what the top hand is going to address the nine, the 12, and the three using the tips of your finger at eye level. The bottom hand now sits, sits two inches below your navel. So it can't be here because my, my shoulders are raised. It can't be here because I'm not in good Tai Chi posture but I'm right here, very comfortable. And I continue to sway with my hips and waist. But what are the hands doing? They're sweeping across. At the extremity of three and nine, they're turning as if they were blocking somebody. They're turning and as if they're blocking someone, and they're alternating with that other hand, okay? They're like egg beaters in that one is going one way, the other one's going the other way, but essentially they're doing the same routine. They, you could also use this as Ken liked to um, refer to it as reading the newspaper. You read the top line of the newspaper, you flip the page, you read the other side of the newspaper. Flip the page etc etc okay just use your imagination okay so the distance in which you use your hands is not tight in here not far out here because that's going to alter your what but just comfortably okay and what's happening I'm already turning my hips and waist because I don't want to be just like this right I'm not using the full use of my body I want to turn the power of your movements lie within your hips and waves. Okay, let's turn this way. Let's practice some of that hips and waves thing, okay? So let's start this way. Left hand is high, right hand is low. Okay, and we're at one o'clock, maybe two o'clock, but not three yet because we're not in motion. We just established one o'clock or two o'clock, okay? Here we go. And your hips and waves are addressed sort of to the one o'clock. Move the hips and waist, drop that bottom hand, flip the top hand to the bottom. 12 o'clock, you have a stem and a cup, do you? 
three o'clock, you flip the hand, stem cup at 12, switch hands at nine, turn the hips and waist is the main thing, 12, three. So each hand takes their turn, but something magical happens. When you turn your hips and waist, you don't have to really worry about what your hands are doing. You just set it up and the hands go for the ride. So let's put some um, parameters to our hands now, okay? Now that you know that the hips and waist are driving the movement of our hands, let's see what we should really be doing or establishing. At three o'clock, turn that upper hand down at 12 o'clock, the left hand has a stem. What is the stem? The arm, the upper arm, right? And you're sort of pointing to 12 o'clock. The bottom hand is near your navel or two inches below your navel. It could sit like this. But as we turn, the hand, the, the right hand cups, change the position, turn your hips and waist. Do you have a stem and you have a cup? Turn your hips and waist. Change the position, turn the hips and waist, stem and cup at 12, turn the hips and waist, change the position. <clears throat> so how am I changing the position? That's probably something you want. You're gonna flip the hand that's up, down, and put the other lower hand up. Down hand, up hand comes down, down hand comes up. Just for now, okay? Just get that first. Change position. But each time we do it, what are you doing? Turning your hips and waist. So as if the hands are just floating. Also, in turning the hips and waist, do you feel that your feet somehow can shift its weight too. It surely can. And it'll be in conjunction to the turning of the hips and waist, okay? So let's figure out how, our, how that can happen. We said that we could advance using our feet, our toe, and we could shift our weight. So that's what we're gonna to try to implement with our hands and with our hips, okay? It's gonna be uh, an enhancer rather than something that's gonna complicate, okay? So here we go, 50-50 on our feet. Left hand higher, right hand away. So you notice that one palm, the lower hand, the palm is away, the upper hand, the palm is always should be seen. But once it takes its rotation, the palm is no longer seen because the upper hand has that palm, okay? So we're like this, one o'clock. We're gonna, we're at 50-50, we're gonna put all the weight on our right foot. Therefore, our left foot can come up. We're gonna open. Hey, what happens? We can get to 12. Turn the hips and waist. What happens? We can get out to nine, but at nine, that's the end of the road. Therefore, we can firm down, change places with our hands, and close our feet. 12, going out to three, we need to shift our weight and open. End of the road, change places, close the feet. What happens? Shift the hands, open the feet. Let's not think too much. Let's just shift the hands, close the feet. Remember, whenever you get out to three and nine, two things happen. And if you are using and engaging your core and using your hips and waist, this becomes a flowing motion, something natural. You don't really have to think about it. Yes or no? Change the position, change the way. I'm gonna close the left. Open the right. Use your hips and waist. 
Otherwise, the clouds become stiff. It's as if the music is helping us with our flow, right? And each time, we're moving only when we feel safe. Let's go the other way. All this power belongs within your mind and with your system. Other way now. So you often hear that Tai Chi is good for everybody, especially seniors, because it's soft, it's gentle, there are no jarring motions, you stop. So this is a typical move of why tai chi, what Tai Chi can do for you, or provide you, or give you. Hey, let's do something fancy. Three o'clock, shift your weight, 12 o'clock, put the weight on the left foot, and what? Come up as a golden claw crawl. Down, shift weight, come up as a golden claw crawl on 12 o'clock. Okay, and that's part of the choreograph where after cloud hands, we get into golden claw crawl. Okay, I'll see how you did on the camera, and, um, but all I want to emphasize is that make sure your hips and waist are moving. Make sure that your feet are helping the movement. Making sure that they're parallel. Making sure that you take every effort to bring your toe to lead and come down slowly.